baby, this is a conversation I have been dying to have. We're gonna discuss the Canadian real estate market that is finally cooling off, and then we're gonna be diving down into REITs, real estate investment trusts that are also selling off in Canada, making incredible buying opportunities for those of you looking to make cash flow off the real estate market passively. And I'm also gonna reveal one mortgage REIT that has been increasing dividends since the 2008 financial crisis, yielding a whopping eight percent if this is a conversation you guys can appreciate obviously hit that like button because the toronto real estate board says that the average selling price across all property types last month was 1.299 million that makes a slight decline from february when the average property changed hands for a record 1.334 million i think this is just buyers exhaustion waiting to see interest rates to go up and ain't nobody want to be buying real estate in the multi-million dollar range for nothing more than like a thousand to two thousand square feet here folks i want to share with you a video of somebody in the real estate market discussing this very topic and how they feel about it take a listen so i think prices are going to peak soon and come down the you, million dollar question is how much do they come down do you think prices are actually going to decline or simply rise more slowly no I, i'm in the i'm in the decline camp i don't think that they rise at a slower rate i think that they peak and come off um, again, back to your earlier point, we're up 21% on a year over year basis. What is this, some growth stock? This is supposed to be a house that's supposed to go up with inflation. And, and again, why is it going up? Yeah, the economy is doing pretty good. We got a pretty good low, in, low unemployment rate, but it's all about rates. And so if rates are gonna go up, it's gonna take this off. So to your question, I could see prices down five to 10% over the next 12 to 24 months. I don't see a crash. Um, you know, we have very progressive immigration policies, uh, 350,000 new immigrants a year. It's great. It's what makes Canada so good. And largely immigrants are moving to the bigger cities. And so that's, a, a, you know, puts a, uh, some demand coming in. So I don't see prices collapsing. But yes, Paul, I think prices are going to come off. And that would be good. Some of the government policies have actually exacerbated the um, Canadian housing market and have added to the price gains. Um, so they have not been productive in any way. I think there are two key points here, incredibly low interest rates and a lack of supply. It is estimated that Ontario alone has a million home shortage here in Ontario alone. Supply is the issue. And I don't think the Canadian governments and the provincial governments have done a good enough job in trying to address the supply. More money should be allocated to actually building uh, we should be providing more land to build. Uh, anything that can increase the supply, whether it be incentives to builders, governments working with builders, supply and interest rates, those are the two key things. And I believe those is where the, the governments have, have fallen short a little bit. Being a young millennial, I'm definitely one of those people waiting on the sidelines. But where I'm not waiting is in real estate investment trust because whether you have 20, 50, $100, you can start cash flowing off this market today. And honestly, if you believe most millennials are just gonna be renting, you wanna be involved in that rental market and here are these REITs that are going to give you direct exposure to this market with Canada Apartment Properties REIT. One that I don't currently own but is starting to get very appealing but only as a 2.83% dividend yield. Not really keeping up with inflation but the stock is starting to trade down 20% here folks and if you take a look at the property diversification types you're getting it spread all across Canada and these are just general rental apartments guys. There's no way this REIT is going to have a bad quarter in the coming year. I mean Rio can my personal favorite these are mall based REITs but are expanding into some of my favorite exposed real estate in Toronto and all across Canada when it comes to the rental market this one has been probably like the most premier buying opportunity because it is pulling back the least amount currently paying a 4.16 percent dividend yield and their largest tenant bases are things like Costco Walmart Loblaw Shoppers Drug Mart LCBO you're not going to lose your money in these REITs these things are not going to go bankrupt smart centers I recently just bought this one I'm glad that it's dipping it's going to give me an opportunity to buy more with a starting yield of 5.74 percent here guys take a look very similar to real can 60 percent of their tenant ba tenant basis is coming from walmart loblaw shoppers canadian tire lowe's dollarama the royal bank and also getting involved in massive expansions into condos and rental units across ontario and of course all over canada now let's talk about the industrial sector because obviously with e-commerce taking over there's a lot of demand for shipping centers this is something that shopify is getting involved with this is something that amazon has actually been leveraging from these companies i'm going to show you today dream industrial probably a premier 
one here in Canada with a 4.53% dividend yield, also trading off of its highs here. And this one is giving you that pure exposure to primarily just those shipping depots. Now I would choose this one over Granite because Dream Industrial is much more diversified from a tenant basis where Granite Real Estate Investment Trust is much more concentrated in basically just a few tenants. 30% of their income is all coming from Magna International and their second largest tenant making up about I think three or 4% is Amazon. So not even Amazon is buying these properties. They're literally just leveraging themselves into these people to keep up with the demand of shipping. But this one gives you more global diversification. But I also don't like that from an income standpoint because if you do not own a REIT that makes over 50% of its income in Canada, you tend to get an extra tax on top of that distribution. Now you could also just take the stance of buying an index fund, but I really don't recommend it because if you buy any one of those first REITs that I showed you, Canadian Apartment Properties, Rio Can, Smart Centers, they are already highly diversified with super AAA rated tenants. And when you buy into these kind of ETF surrounding Canadian real estate, you're paying very high fees because I think the MER fee or the Murphy on the Vanguard FTSE Canadian Cap REIT index is like 0.35%. It's astronomical considering the yield on this is only like, I think just over 3%. And when we look at the tenant basis, guys, they got a Canadian Apartment Properties, RealCan, First Service Corp, Granite REIT, Allied Properties. I mean, you can go through this and this is how I personally start finding REITs because these ETFs have done all the due diligence for you and you can just pick your personal favorites and just take a look guys because yeah 0.35% management fee and under a 3% yield that is not nearly as attractive. Get rid of the management fee, just buy these individually, which leads me into this very intriguing uh, largest mortgage, basically corporation, I'm going to say. This allows you to basically get exposure to private mortgages within the Canadian market. Very volatile company, but I was blown away by the dividend payout because not only is this paying 8.2%, but when you actually go into the history, I thought there'd be a little bit more volatility here. But as we go back over time, this company has actually actually historically increased this dividend year over year. And the only time it was cut we can really see was back in the 2007, 2008 financial crisis. So this does come with a little bit more risk, but at the same time here, guys, MCAN actually allows you to even take your money and give it to them to invest privately into mortgages. Unfortunately, their rates are not that intriguing. They have short-term rates of 0.05% and five-year rates of 3.4%. But honestly, you're better off just buying this in and of itself. And again, this comes with a little bit more exposed risk. I do like it for maybe somebody in retirement looking for some cash flow. And honestly, if you were a little bit younger, just buy these super stable REITs or build a portfolio of all of these guys. You are going to cash flow monthly, passive income, get exposure to the greatest real estate market in the entire world and have to do nothing except sleep comfortably at night. Now, obviously, you're not leveraging the bank's capital, but you're not putting yourself a million dollars in debt. And the best thing about living in Ontario is there's nothing wrong with renting. There is rental control locks here. So it's not like your rent prices are just going to skyrocket 30% next year. Usually, they're only allowed to go up 1% or 2%. So you can rent an $800,000 condo for a couple thousand a month, and it would not take a whole lot of money in these REITs. I mean, think about it. If you had a million dollars in these REITs at an average yield of even 6 or 7%, guys, that's insane. That's 70, that's 50 to 70, $80,000 a year if you're using something like MCAN. That would literally pay for your rent, your meals, and everything else. Almost better off buying the REITs than buying the actual real estate itself. I mean, this is a conversation that's been very intriguing to me lately. If it's something you want to continue to see updates on, consider hitting that like button, folks. But stay cool, stay awesome, and as always, I look forward to catching you in the next one.